Tonight on the South Today, how Kiwi Olympians are using the housing market to help reach their dreams of going to Paris. The Dunedin City Council strengthens its relationship with Mana Whenua by signing a new agreement. And communities across the South Island commemorate Armistice Day with a range of ceremonies. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Simon Henderson. The first stage of a long-awaited upgrade to Dunedin's main street is finally complete, with the fences and cones taken away today. A small ceremony was held this afternoon to mark the reopening of the busy farmers' block of George Street. Dunedin Mayor Jules Rallet was on hand to help mark the milestone, sharing the moment with workers and business owners who hope the new space will be popular with shoppers. You know, it's been a long time coming, an upgrade for George Street, because it has been on the books for a long time. Uh, but I think the critical thing is that it um, enhances the economic viability of the street. And uh, I think, and certainly in the first instance, it'll bring a lot of people in. Emergency services were the first to test drive the new roadway, which is designed as a pedestrian-friendly space with one-way access for vehicles. The council's now starting work on the Knox Church block of George Street between Frederick and Albany Streets. The whole project is expected to be completed in 2024. The country's largest inflatable water park is now set to reopen near Cromwell in time for summer, after clearing a regulatory traffic jam. The future of the popular holiday attraction on Lake Dunstan was in doubt after Waka Kotahi raised concerns around traffic safety. However, the Central Otago District Council has now issued a new permit for the inflatable attraction based on some traffic improvements. They include construction of a new turning bay into Loburn Park. LINS, the government agency responsible for managing the public land, has also agreed allowing water park Kiwi Water Park to open for the summer on the first weekend in December. New homes are being built on behalf of the New Zealand Olympic Committee to help Kiwi athletes reach their dreams. The first of four homes was unveiled in Christchurch today with profits helping send the New Zealand team to the Paris Olympics. It takes talent and determination to become an Olympic champion, but finding the funds to get to the Games takes a different type of skill. The New Zealand Olympic Committee has the job of providing these funds and has announced a new funding stream. It's partnered with home building company Genian Homes to help assist New Zealand athletes in getting to the Paris Olympic Games in 2024. This is a really special day for us because this is the first Olympic home that we've built with Jenny and Homes. Each home will be acquired by the Olympic Committee and then sold, with profits helping fund the team to Paris. We talked about how do we create the most value for each other, and one of the things that Richard, one of the owners, said is, well, why don't we build homes together? I thought it was a brilliant idea. I thought it was something that I'm, you know, I'm disappointed we hadn't thought of earlier. A couple of Olympic athletes were on hand to celebrate the announcement. High jumper Hamish Kerr welcomes any assistance in helping high performance athletes achieve their dreams. It costs money, uh, it costs a lot of money and so to have amazing partners like Genian Homes to, to do cool things like this for the campaign, um, it really, really adds value and it's, it's very essential. And cross country mountain bike rider Anton Cooper says having the support of businesses through innovative projects like this is vital. We don't work a regular job, you know, um, it's often not salary based for a lot of athletes and we rely on funding um, through high performance sport, um, through the NZOC. It's the first of four genuine Olympic homes to be built in the lead up to the Paris Olympics with the aim of helping more Kiwi athletes compete at the world's biggest games. In Christchurch, the South Today. The Dunedin City Council has signed an updated partnership agreement with Mana Whenua at the Otako Marae this afternoon. A commitment to cooperation. Pukataraki Runaka's Matapura Allison and Rachel Wesley of Te Runanga or Otako signing a relationship agreement with Dunedin Mayor Jules Raddock. The updated agreement, or Mana Tu Whakataka, was agreed by the new council earlier this week. It sets out updated standards for consultation and communication between local government and mana whenua. The Tapai Māori group will also bring together both sides for a quarterly hui to, 
to ensure Māori goals are reflected in local decision making. A digger blocked one lane of the southern motorway near Dunedin this afternoon after it fell off a trough. Emergency services closed a lane along the road to Green Island around 1pm as traffic slowly passed by the incident. The truck appeared to have clipped the underside of the motorway bridge with the impact nudging the digger free. No one was injured in the accident but delays were encountered by drivers along the motorway. Dunedin firefighters were among a group awarded a special medal this week for their services during the catastrophic Black Summer of bushfires in Australia. 47 South Island firefighters who crossed the Tasman in 2019 and 2020 have received the Australia National Emergency Medal at a ceremony in Christchurch. Two Dunedin senior firefighters say they volunteered to join the battle joining forces with their Australian colleagues to help defend remote towns in extreme fire conditions. The guys on the ground there, they hadn't seen their family for weeks. Um, they're exhausted, like Jake was saying, they're just knackered. So being able to go over and give a bit of relief for that, um, they need the help. So yeah, definitely yeah, give them a hand where we can. The award is given by the Australian Government for service in times of exceptional crisis. The Dunedin firefighters thanked their families and local fire crews for supporting them during their time away from New Zealand. Crowds gathered around the country this morning to commemorate the end of World War I. From Invercargill to Queenstown and Dunedin, local military arms paid their respects to the fallen. A loud 25-pound gun salute marking this year's Armistice Day at Dunedin's Queen's Gardens. Crowds of military personnel gathered around the Cenotaph to remember the day in 1918 when the First World War finally ended. Wreaths were laid and Dunedin's RSA choir sang the national anthem. Speeches were given, drawing comparisons to today's wars. Um, it was a very moving ceremony. Um, retired Police Commissioner Howard Broad uh, was a, gave a very good speech, a very informative speech of New Zealand's role in World War I and World War II, but also in modern conflicts around uh, peacekeeping. Ceremonies were also held around the South, young and old lining up in front of the South Invercargill War Memorial to give their salutes of respect. Meanwhile in Queenstown, bagpipes rang out and flags were flown at half-mast for the 11th hour of the 11th day. Across the South, the South Today. F.I. Akine still to come on the South Today. Tasty treats good enough to eat in Alexandra. And forget sheepdog trials, Christchurch crowds are being entertained by duck herding. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's my mate John. Super Savers. The Super Saver catalog is out now. Packed full of amazing deals, including 50% off all outdoor furniture. Plus, you can pay it off over 36 months interest-free. Super Savers. Only at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street, and online at mymatejohn.co.nz. Where'd you get that furniture from? Stafford Street. And my mate John. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We've opened another pop-up store in Invercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right beside the Lone Star. Come and check us out we've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got moleskins, we've got every sort of shirt, worn ones, work ones, business, merino knitwear, jeans, trousers, you name it, the list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Alex Campbell Menswear, pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill. Hi, we're Asia in Otago. Aid Concern Otago hosts a multitude of social activities, including little bobs.
Welcome back. The National Cake Decorators Conference Cake and Sugar Art Displays have provided a tasty visual treat at Central Stories in Alexandra. Tiny masterpieces to tempt the taste buds across a wide range of styles. A creation of St Enoch's Church in Alexandra, as well as gingerbread houses and all manner of flowers made from icing, was shown in Alexandra as part of the Nationwide Cake Decorators Conference. Among the cakes was a steampunk-inspired stack of hats, complete with icing cogs and wheels. Rhododendrons and a host of other flowers impressed judges and the general public alike. More than 130 cake decorators from around the country, as well as a few from Australia, were in the region for the prestigious event. In Alexandra, the South today. Tens of thousands of Cantabrians have been enjoying the region's New Zealand A&P show over the last few days. Show weeks also attracted people from across the country to compete in events and stage crowd-pleasing activities like duck herding. Herding ducks with the help of a four-legged friend. Sheepdog Charm leading the charge at this quirky event, one of a range of activities entertaining the crowds at this year's three-day New Zealand AMP show. Blenheim farmer Donald Stewart has been staging his duck herding show, along with his Indian ducks, for more than 30 years. An old fella told me once uh, when I had no sheep and he gave me a pup and he said, I've got no sheep, I said, use your ducks, like that. And, uh, so I did, and it, it's worked. Here they go. Here they go. They seem to like that. Stuart's among the thousands of out-of-towners who have come to Christchurch from across the country and as far away as Perth for the biggest AMP show of the year. The sport of wood chopping was another old favourite for visitors as athletes tore into their logs with gusto. Oh, could have gone better, like got a couple of crude knots in there and broken axe, so it is what it is, you know it happens. Sunny weather helped bring out the crowds, a welcome sight for the organisers. After COVID put the big show under severe financial pressure. And events like these dog trials giving the tens of thousands of city visitors a little taste of what life is like on the farm for the rural community. In Christchurch, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The first of four Olympic homes has been unveiled in Christchurch with profits to help athletes compete at the Paris Olympics. Dunedin City Council signed a new partnership agreement with Mana Whenua, ensuring Māori goals are reflected in decision making. And communities across the South have commemorated Armistice Day, marking the end of the First World War. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT with editor Barry Stewart. Hello Welcome. Simon. Uh, a protection for pre-1940 homes uh, has been thrown out by the Environment Court and of course uh, developers uh, are excited and um, those with an eye to protection of heritage less so. So more on that in the paper tomorrow. We go down to Riverton and Riverton has gone gaga over Amy Rawl, who is, of course, competing in the World Cup final for the Black Ferns against England on Saturday. So everybody's very excited about that. And we will have uh, a story on Amy and her family uh, from Riverton, plus also a big preview on the sports pages about that event, which should be uh, uh, pretty amazing, a full house at, uh, at Eden Park. So it's going to be good. Um, and a story about uh, about murder, so cold-blooded murder, uh, cold, um, cold-hearted cold dis disposal, uh, what drove a Dunedin woman to stab her friend to death and then uh, bury her in the backyard. Uh, our court reporter Rob Kidd uh, inve investigates the uh, the trail or the journey to, to murder. So a good story there. Uh, we also have the mix, uh, lots of good reading in there and uh, and lots of other interesting stories in your paper tomorrow. I look forward to reading it. Thank Good you, Barry. You. Thank you. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by Mallmap, the skin cancer detection specialists. 
Looking at the situation, a weak trough of low pressure will move over the region this weekend with mild northerly airflow tomorrow but cooler southwesterly winds developing on Sunday. Heading to the top of the South Island, Nelson sees moderate northerlies with showers, a high of 19. Moderate northerlies as well for Greymouth with thunderstorms and a high of 18. Christchurch sees light easterlies and showers, a high of 24. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, light easterlies and showers for both Ashburton and Timaru, highs of 24. Variable winds and cloudy for Oamaru, a high of 22. Heading westwards to the Central Lakes, it is light winds and high cloud for Wanaka, Queenstown and Alexandra, highs of 23 across the board. Heading further south, light winds with high cloud for Balclutha and Gore, highs of 23. The Caitlin sees variable winds and mostly cloudy, a touch cooler on 20. And off to the deep south, Invercargill is fine tonight, then tomorrow fine with high cloud with some light northerly winds, a high of 24. Cooler south westerlies develop early Sunday with cloudy skies and some showers, a high of 15. And finally heading to Dunedin, fine tonight with high cloud and breezy nor'easterlies. Saturday sees thick high cloud with some breezy nor'easterlies, decreasing during the morning, then warm for a time. Cooler south westerlies freshening during the afternoon, a high of 22. Sunday is overcast with moderate northerlies at first decreasing, then some rain and cooler south easterly winds developing during the afternoon, a high of 18. And that's the news this Friday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to see our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again next week. Matawa. Public Interest Journalism, funded through New Zealand On Air.